50 Cent's weight loss, a Northwest music video, and Meek Mill charges what? JT's tour on five Spice Girls and J-Lo on a Saturday. We head over to the talk for the top song as we explain the massive success of Alicia Keys and spend some extra time with Julia Michaels. Hey guys, it's Tetris and welcome to the Thursday, January 25th episode of Billboard News. Let's get busy with three things you should know in hip hop. Fans are saying 50 Cent looks like 25 Cent after the iconic rapper is looking much slimmer than usual in an IG post. Users were quick to say he is probably using popular weight loss drug Ozempic. Well, a source told Page Six, 50 is not on Ozempic and has been on a rigorous training program for eight months. My thoughts are just be honest. So many people are using it to get skinny now, so just be proud if you do. No shame in the game. Meek Mill has zero shame. The hip hop heavyweight jumped on Twitter to say, every time I do a verse, I charge 250K and up. If you got 150K on site and I like the song, we can swap it out. 150K down payment? He charging them Nicki Minaj prices. Maybe he learned that when they dated. But does a Meek Mill verse help a song the way a Nicki feature can? Like father, like daughter. Kanye West has jumped on Instagram to share a storyboard of what seems to be a video he's working on with daughter Northwest. He captioned, talking video treatment by your bestie, Miss Miss Westie. I love their bun. North is definitely gonna be somebody we see a lot of in the future. And the news keeps coming. If you're a millennial, here's three things you definitely want to know today. Justin Timberlake delighted fans with one night only in Memphis. And now he's announced one night in New York. It takes place in Irving Plaza on January 31st, his birthday. And the tickets are free. I just hope he's not selfish, pun intended, and we get a full tour and something with the boys of NSYNC. We need a performance of Better Place. I love the Spice Girls so much, I don't know what to do. And now Mel B is telling us we're getting a reunion with all five. Scary Spice stopped by the Jennifer Hudson show, and though she normally gets in trouble for spilling the beans, said the ladies of girl power are working on something as a group. Stop right now, thank you very much. Seeing four of them in London was the best night of my life. Add Posh and RIP me. It's been fun. We can't get enough of Jennifer Lopez as she's promoting her new project, This Is Me Now. We just got news she's performing on Saturday Night Live. New music, a new short film, and an SNL performance? Nobody works harder than J-Lo. And thank you for taking a break from TikTok to watch our show, but we love to talk too, so here are the top songs on the app. Flo Millie holds on to the top spot while the top 10 sees two new tracks. He's speeding all right, all his hand on my... Flo Millie's Never Lose Me spends a second week at number one on the TikTok Billboard Top 50 for the chart posting January 25th. Project Pat takes over spots five and seven, Choose You returns to the top 10, and Good Googly Moogly breaks in for the first time thanks to a trend where users, um, show appreciation. One final new face in the top 10 is MGMT's Time to Pretend. Users have been featuring the track in TikToks where they share a seemingly negative statement and make it positive with emojis. Every Thursday, Billboard will bring you the verified list of the hottest songs on TikTok by monitoring music discovery and engagement on the platform in the United States. To find the TikTok Billboard Top 50 each week, users can simply go to any sound detail page and tap the top right button to access the charts page. She's had us fallen since 2001, and today Billboard is explaining some details about Alicia Keys. Throughout her decades-long career, Alicia Keys has set the Billboard charts on fire. Topping the Hot 100, the Billboard 200, and many more. Let's take a look back at some of her most memorable chart moments. This is Billboard Explains, Alicia Keys, Fire on the Charts. Alicia made her debut in 2001 thanks to her single, Fallen, which reached number one on the Hot 100. Other Hot 100 number ones include her duet with Usher, My Boo, in 2004, Seven's no one, no one, no one, no one. 
and her iconic Jay-Z collab, Empire State of Mind. Let's hear it for New York. Alicia has nine top 10 Hot 100 hits. Five of her albums reached number one on the Billboard 200, including her debut, Songs in A Minor, 2003's The Diary of Alicia Keys, 2005's Unplugged, 2007's As I Am, and 2012's Girl on Fire. Alicia was ranked as Billboard's number one R&B hip-hop artist for the 2000s decade, and the charts prove she definitely deserves that title. She has eight number ones on the Hot R&B Hip-Hop Songs chart and 15 top tens. She has the most number one hits on the adult R&B Airplay chart with 14. And her 54 weeks at number one on the Hot R&B Hip-Hop Songs chart puts her third among all female artists right behind Aretha Franklin's 65 and Rihanna's 56. We can't wait to see where Alicia's career takes her next. Have you seen the movie Wish yet? Well, you should, it's amazing. One of the movie's songwriters, the lovely Julia Michaels, is taking us behind the photo. Hey, I'm Julia Michaels, and I'm going behind the photo with Billboard. was really a special day. I was on the cover of Billboard magazine because all three of us were nominated for Best New Artist together at the Grammy. Well, actually, I was woken up by my manager, Becca. We were in Australia, we were on tour with Shawn Mendes. She woke me up by jumping on me to tell me that we were nominated for Song of the Year and Best New Artist that year. Yeah, this was a picture from Billboard and I got to meet these two incredible people people that are just such spectacular artists. Uh, it was a really, really special day. Oh, you guys, it's my mommy. Isn't she gorge? That's my mom, Julie. She's Julie, I'm Julia. If I had to guess, we were probably somewhere in Iowa, where I'm from. Yeah, my mom and I still hold hands like that. To be honest, I just turned 30 this year, and anytime I go home to visit my mom, she'll always walk in my room and be like, can we nuggle? And so, yeah, I'm 30, I still snuggle my mom. hey -o! Lots of people that know me know that hot cheetahs are my drug. I got this plaque from Spotify that Issues, which was my first single, reached a billion streams. I wrote the song about a really, really, really shitty ex-boyfriend, and it really worked out for me. Thank you. <laughs> LOL. This is Mr. Adam Levine. I toured with him as well. I opened for him. We're still friends. This was 2018, I think, and we still talk to each other like once every two weeks. He's basically like the brother I never wanted, but somehow ended up with. I deeply, deeply love him. I love you, even though you're an asshole in the best way possible. I mean, come on. Can we be a thruple? I actually have met Nicole a few times because I also toured with her husband, Keith Urban, and I've written songs with him as well. I got to see her that night, which was so fun, and I got to meet him for the first time, Mr. Anthony, and so handsome. So handsome. It was a it was a beautiful night. Also, it was in Nashville where all my family was, so I got to have best of both worlds. I got to go see a lot of pretty people, and I got to go spend time with my family who are also famous. And Thursday's show is in the basket. Come back tomorrow to get all your major music releases for the week. I'm Tetris, and I'll see you then.